welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Peterson, and uh, we are going to continue our journey on the heel deal of the good, bad, and the ugly. And today, we're probably going to talk, I think I'm going to combine both sections uh, of the bad and the ugly together because, honestly, it wasn't that bad. But uh, just to kind of give you guys a little little heads up, this is, uh, is going to be one of those podcasts you're going to want to pay attention to because... When I unpack like these types of deals, this is the reality. And this is the part I think most, a lot of syndicators don't ever talk about. And it is really uh, in between your LOI to all the way to the close, what happens in between and all the things that have to come into place is there's a lot, there's a lot going on in, in the backgrounds to make all these deals work. And this one was uh, complicated by the factor of time. We just didn't have a whole lot of time to get it all done. So guys, can't wait to share this one. Before we do that though, a word from our sponsors. Hey, this is Shelly Peterson, Corey's better half. My husband shares amazing stories of the good, bad, and ugly of apartment investing. And while many of you want to do this yourself, we have found that a lot of you would like to invest alongside with us. If that is you, I want to invite you to get on a short webinar where we discuss our deal room and how you can be a part of our private investor club. Go to kahunainvestments.com forward slash webinar and register now. You won't be disappointed. Again, go to kahunainvestments.com forward slash webinar. And we look forward to sharing our private deal room with you. All right, uh, we're back. So I'm going to tell you, so when I think about this deal and um, I, I'm going to talk about my first the first mistake I made, right? Because I swear it's always little something. Like I think I've got a pretty good checklist, but then when you do something you've never done before, you are faulty to make some mistakes. And so here's in the hill. And and, and let's recap real quick the, before we start. Let's recap. So we found this deal. Hill got it from a broker. He called. We looked at it. Yes, it looked good. We went out on site. Looked even better. We knew this market because this property is right behind a property that we already own. So we understand what's going on. But what we don't have right now is, um, well, we end up eventually finally winning the bid at the auction, right? And we wired like seven or 10%, which is like 700 and something, $760,000 to the title company. And so that was, um, that was an experience to get, have all that money pre-committed and ready to roll. Right. So we were making calls way before uh, the auction to say, hey, if this happens, can you do this? And so I, I had four investors that were on the call I said, yep, that's what we're down. We can do it. And so we made it happen. Now, to talk about where it gets ugly, right, bad and ugly, or good, the good, bad and the ugly. So the bad, right, would be uh, this next part, which is so I'm we're under contract and I'm like, yep, got the wire done and we're going through it. And now at this point, understand everything that has to get done. Now we already had pre done a lot of it, which is like you get your pitch deck or, you know, our marketing packet all put together. We had that almost all ready to go. And, um, you know, so then the other part is you got to notify your key people, which We'd already given them a heads up, which is mainly our insurance uh, vendor and our loan uh, mortgage broker, which is Aaron Mole with Bercadia. So Aaron and his team, you know, like, great, congratulations, got, got the deal. Now, I had already had them, like, pre-looking at this deal with the T12 and the financials to get it kind of already going with a finance company or, or, to get a quote. And so it's really, really important. Like this was how quickly this thing had to go because from the moment we signed that contract, we have 30 days to close with a one-time 30-day extension that you can that you can do. Now, here's the part where I screwed up. <laughs> Upon really looking at that contract, I realized you can get that 30-day extension, but you've got to come up with an additional two hundred and like fifty thousand dollars or three hundred thousand dollars i think it was to be able to uh, exercise that extension that was that was like oh i wasn't expecting that so you know 
hold on, let me make some calls, right? So I make some calls, get a couple other investors in on, on board with the deal. And at this point, you know, we're just like, okay, we felt like it, but it was a, it was a rookie mistake. Cause I felt like at the end of the day, I was like, oh gosh, cause I'm ready to, Hey, it's like two days uh, to extend in our 30 day contract. And I've already got, I've already notified, you know, lender, all the stuff we've got insurance working. We're, you know, we're starting to work on our thirds. We're prepaying for all these things and uh, appraisal and all this stuff. We're, we're on the move, right? We're, we, and we've got to do it fairly quickly. And by the way, this is November and December. The two worst months to close, right? Like to do work. It is by far the hardest time to close any transaction. And we're also on top of that, we're trying to close by the end of the year, which is like the 29th. Okay. So everybody's working super, super hard, but I didn't see the $300,000 additional earnest money. And so that was like two days before I'm ready to do it. And I'm like, hold on. They're like, Wayne, Wayne, my attorney is like, Corey, you know, it's going to cost you another 300 grand to uh, extend. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, it's in, it's in this subsection of the contract. It says you can, but then it alludes to a different part of the contract where it talks about the fee that they want. And I was like, oh, I didn't see that fee. So there was, there was my bad as I, I didn't read. I mean, even though I sent this contract to Wayne, he looked at it. He's like, yeah, yeah. You know, this is like our normal stuff. Because a lot of times Wayne will usually, uh, he'll help me when we write our PSAs, our purchase and sales agreement. Wayne will always put like a 30 day extension that we will try to get for free, but we're always, we're always willing to pay, you know, between hundred and hundred fifty thousand dollars to get an extension. If we need it, it's kind of our last parachute. So in his mind, he was like, yeah, it's close, right? Close as a grenade, right? <laughs> and so uh, that blew up on Corey unexpectedly. I was like, oh, gosh, I guess we're going to go hurt and get some more, more money real quick. And so we did. So it wasn't the end of the world. It was just one of those things where you didn't see it. Like, oh, gosh, I got two days to find 300 grand real quick. And so AKA my wife gets on the phones and starts pounding the payment. That's what she does for us, by the way. She is the closer, or we'll call it Rainmaker is what her title says. And she is just that, an absolute Rainmaker. In fact, um, we're probably going to have her on the podcast, talk a little bit more about what she does. And I, th I always I always think, I love the the ones that she's on because she brings so much energy to the table. And then you get to see us do uh, our husband and wife thing, <laughs> which may be good or may be bad. I don't know. So... Looking at this deal, now we're like, okay, so that was kind of my, that was, that was the one bad that I was like, I did not, I didn't see that. That was my fault, right? I, I mean, I looked at the contract, I sent it to my attorney, like we always do. And we both looked at it and we just, normally we kind of have like, make sure we understand the timing of the contract when and what's going to happen. And usually it's our own purchase and sell agreement, but in this case, we're using someone else's contract and it's very rigid and it's very one-sided. And of course the auction places, they don't care. It's like, take it or leave it. It is what it is. It's a foreclosure. Like, you know, this is, you know, buyer beware. You better know your deal. Okay. So, okay. I get it. Um, you know, it's kind of like an REO or buying something at the courthouse steps, like single family, but like on steroids, cause it's a buying 138, you know, doors, 238 beds. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Right. So you're like, okay, I understand this now comes to my second. Uh Oh, right. In a, in a way, uh, not in the world, but normally we were now sending, once we go under contract, I'm sending my whole team to go do a full due diligence audit where we're doing a financial audit and a, you know, a physical inspection audit. And then I get there. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, I call the broker and I was like, Hey, listen, we're ready to come do this. He's like, uh, yeah, that's, that's not how this contract works. Mm, what he's like yeah you know it's buying here buying it as is it's what the contract states and uh, there's not really a due diligence period um by the way uh, but we do have we do have what's called a pca a, a, a property condition assessment report 
and um, it was current it was and it was current like it had just been done and it's very 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 detailed so in essence it's the same thing right so without me having to do all the work so that was another one like we got like i really wanted to make sure i knew what i was buying right now when that happens and this has happened to us before in other properties too like sometimes it's every deal is a little bit different and a little bit every every deal is a little bit weird so we were just like okay that makes that's fine um but i'm still coming to the property i i need to go look at your models and just a couple you know maybe if there's anything down let me look into that so that we, we got them to agree to that and by the way the staff at this time they're pretty nice right uh, everybody's nice and this is actually another good uh, of this deal is when we got there and we were interviewing the staff, most of them wanted to stay. Most of them, all except the, the, the property manager, she was leaving. She was like, I'm, I'm a Tarantino person. I'm with this company. I'm not staying. But her AGM, uh, assistant general manager, had been there for seven years and she was ready to get the promotion and get the pay. So she absolutely wanted to be in charge. And so we're like, perfect. Yes, you can absolutely do that. So she had the skill set. She was doing it anyways. And so it made perfect, perfect transition. Now, a couple things that were not, and this is part of the bad, but it's really not bad for us. It's actually good for us. But this is what happens when you take over a property is not everybody's going to make the cut. And so we, as we're in negotiations, as we're trying to close, we have 60 days, we're really evaluating the staff hard to make sure they are, you know, they have the capabilities because we don't really want to bring over anybody that's going to look like dead weight, right? Or that's really not doing the job. So we're having confidential uh, discussions with, you know, property manager, the AGM, and then we're having individual, uh, you know, discussions with each and every person. We're evaluating them. And so what we found out was a couple things. One, this property came with a bus, right? It was a dub bus or something, the hill bus. And wrapped in a nice 16-person uh, van. And the only challenge is, it's like, with that van comes the cost of keeping the van up, the responsibility of keeping the van up. And also, um, and by the way, this property is, I don't know, like half a mile to the college so i don't see a whole lot of value in the bus and not to mention the person that's working for the bus driver that's the bus driver is making like sixty thousand dollars a year sixty five thousand dollars a year so it was immediately on our chopping block so even though we took ownership of the bus we're going to sell the bus and we're also going to um and we obviously didn't hire that staff. Now, now that's the hard part of this business. And you have to, you know, we have a responsibility to the investor and to our business plan to do what we say we're going to do. And that salary was not included in our budget. It just wasn't. And we already knew that from the get go. And um, it just didn't make sense to carry that on, on average, there's like three to five people taking the bus. And it's just not worth the cost to do it. And just so you understand, you know, I would say, you know, the salary is 60,000 uh, plus call it on another 20 grand in expense for running the bus. That's $80,000, right? And if you divide that by uh, a seven cap, oh gosh, that's $1.1 million of valuation by deleting it, by taking it off the books. Hmm. Do you think it was a good decision? Yes. Right. And honestly, this has been our first full month running without it. And it's not made one bit of difference. Not one. Yeah, we had a couple of complaints. Um, they're over it now. And again, life goes on. Right. So it's just because somebody was doing it before, it doesn't always mean you have to do it again. And you have to ask the question, does this make financial sense? Is this a really big value add proposition where it increases something or not. And in this position, it would just, it wasn't. And I knew it. And, um, you know, so at the end of the day, we did the dirty and and we got rid of the bus and got rid of the staff to drive the bus. And so that's kind of a bad, you know, it's 
I say it's bad. It's probably it's probably good too, right? It really is. It's best. You have to let someone go, and you, you know, you're these are people's salaries, and these are real people, right? So, I get it. It's a huge responsibility when you're making business decisions, but at the end of the day, the business has to succeed. The business for it keeps everybody else employed. And if it's running well, it gets to stay in business. And so our job is to make sure these properties stay in business. So, so that's the bad. Now let's jump into the ugly. And man, I can't make this stuff up. I swear I can't make it up. I mean, so it's just, it's, it's so interesting how, when I, when I look at these deals and how they run and all the things that go on and you're like, man, you know, we're so excited. You're like at this point, you know, we're about, I don't know, two weeks away from closing, but there's still a couple things that are not quite finished. First of all, we're watching the treasury, the the treasury, and it keeps falling, and which was good at this point in time. We're like, oh yes, that's that's helping us out. Because we're thinking we're gonna get more proceeds, right? We're gonna be like, as it keeps flowing, we probably can get more proceeds or a better rate means it means a lower payment. And we've not locked in our rate yet. But we're ready to lock in the rate, but we've not locked in the rate yet. So, and it's probably a good thing that we didn't in the very beginning because in that 60 days, it was starting to go down. We're like, oh, yes, this is a benefit. This is really good. It's really good. Now, the other thing that wasn't quite buttoned up was our insurance. And guys, listen to me when I talk to you about insurance. Insurance across the country and the nation has gone up. 100x most most places it feels like it's 100x on some of my properties it's 200x and i don't know why there's no rhyme or reason so when we looked at the uh, insurance line in our broker's underwriting he had it for $33,000 and that's what the T12 said $33,000 of course we know that it's not true and I believe we underwrote it at $68,000, right? $68,000. And, you know, which is a 100% increase, right? Okay, yeah. It's got to be more. I'm like, this property's got new roofs. It's in good condition. I don't I don't see it getting out of control. But, you know, towards the end, now we're like, we're getting to the point where like two weeks out, we got to start, like, we need to have our numbers. And we still don't have the insurance piece buttoned up. And it gets worse, right? Now, we're about three days away from closing. And the only thing left, the only thing left is rate lock with like terms, final terms. Because normally these things are all kind of re, especially if they're Freddie or Fannie. But this is this is a CMBS lender. And there's a little bit of flexibility into it. And they're trying. They're like, hey, listen, Corey, we got to make sure that you can meet your DCR test. And all the stuff that we want that we need, and the and the rate was going down, so that was good for us. So we're like, okay, we just got to figure out what we got to do, and we're gonna have this call a couple of days before and lock in rate, and we're gonna be good to go with, you know, total things. But but we're not done with the insurance. The insurance piece is not final. So here and then, so here here comes right. So we finally get the insurance piece done. And so it's like, good news, guys. Insurance is done. We're like, well, how much is it going to be? We need the invoices because we got to submit that. That's going to end. You know, we I think we had, uh, Aaron had submitted like $75,000 to the lender. I, I submitted 68 in my underwriting. He had submitted 75 to the lender. So we're in, in the lender's mind, we're expecting something like 78,000, maybe 80. Uh, you know, I'm expecting something close to 68. We get the bill. He's like, it's $125,000. Whoa. <laughs> what? Say what? Hold on. Where's Ashton? Like someone's punking me. Like, how do you go from $33,000 with the bank to $125,000? Something smells way off track. And he's like, Corey, this is it. And by the way, in that negotiation, there was some some type of coverage that the lender would kept on asking for. And my and my insurance broker was like, listen, you cannot buy this insurance. There's no price that you can do it. 
you want they wanted like these limits of a hundred thousand dollars she's like there is no hundred thousand dollar limit you can't buy it you can you can purchase it it is you're gonna have to take that off of your conditions because there's no way it's going to happen it's not in the marketplace of course they keep saying well it's got to be it's got to be and dude lenders has taken some a minute to understand that the insurance market has changed and if they want to do loans they're gonna have to be a little bit flexible hey would you like to learn more about kahuna investments in our deal room let's do virtual coffee book a 15-minute call with us so we can learn more about your investment goals and how kahuna investments can help go to kahunainvestments.com forward slash coffee to book your call today again that's kahunainvestments.com forward slash coffee let's have some virtual coffee and get to know one another so but still at this point 125 time out that changes my loan conditions right so where i went from getting maybe some you know a bigger ltv or a good good loan proceeds i start seeing like a four hundred thousand dollar haircut on my on my proceeds meaning i've got to bring more money to closing not fun not good and you know of course we have it but we're like dude what's going on so this is like the day there's the day before we're supposed to close no oh hold on no no let me back up. We're supposed to close on the 29th. This is on the 28th. We realize we're not going to get it done. And I have to make a decision. And this is one where I'm like, okay, we, I go back and I ask for an extension with the lender. I'm like, we're not going to close on time. And they're like, well, for, Forty something thousand dollars we can give you an extension till the 15th or something like that, right? Or and by the way, it's not going to count towards closing costs. Well, that's that's not gonna work. And now I'm I'm getting a little bit and so luckily my attorney is and Wayne's good, he really is good. He's like, We don't need that many, like we only need a couple days, right? So we go back and they just agreed to give us like till January 3rd. We're supposed to close on um the 29th that's not going to work so all of a sudden all our cost segregation study that we did that we we're planning for tax depreciation goes out the door now it's next year so that's number one suck that's a bad right like that wasn't expecting that we're trying to close close by the month, month, end of the month but at, at, the, at the end of the day insurance and lending they're not ready to go they can't pull the trigger and they have to get it all done because these docs have to be tied out exactly and everything has to be updated on the fly now because like no one's ready to go and we don't have the final numbers and they keep changing. So, so then here comes the next curveball. So the lender goes and says, Hey, the 125. Okay. We see the 125. Now, guess what? It's not going to work because we only accept standard and poor's rating and they don't have a standard standard and poor's rating. It only has AM's best. And of course, it's a it's a rating with AM's best, but it's not paid to get rated on standard and poor's. And so they're like, we can't we can't use this company. We can't use it. And my guys, what do you mean you can't? You like this is a Freddie and Fanny standard. We use this company all the time across the country. It's a you know triple A rated. You know, it's the right rating. It's the same. Nope. Our loan docs say this. And, and so like, so he's like, well, all right. So he goes and gets a new quote from a different carrier. That quote comes into $168,000. $168,000. Now we're like, oh my God, this is not going. This, this is bad. I just keep seeing loan dollars. <laughs> being taken away and I have to bring in more capital now to make this still work. And so at 168, I'm like, I got now. And by the way, I'm 100% hard on my almost million five of money, right? Ask me if my butt cheeks are tight right now. Yep. They're tight. Okay. I now I've been in this situation before and I understand the number one rule is to stay calm Collect it and negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Get what you need to get done, right? So I'm pushing it, but and, I, and also I have a great team. Like if it wasn't for my team members, like because when the stuff gets weird, it's, it's 
this is when you're going to see true colors. And man, I've got, I have the team. I have an exceptional group of people that know how to get stuff done. So my insurance guy is just like, dude, this is the, I can't believe. And so he's fighting for the insurance right now. Then Aaron Mall, my lender comes in, he goes, Hey, Corey, also have them check what they insured because here's the appraisal. Here's all the stuff that you need. And they finally shared it with Tom, my insurance broker. And he was actually over insuring some of the value. And so, so Tom gets on with the insurance broker or the insurance person, compliance person with the lender. And finally they have a come to Jesus. And this is what, like, it's like the lenders fight, fight, fight. Then they're like, finally, we're at the day of, or the day before, and it's got to close the next day. No, no, this is the day of. Dude, I've still got to send the wire. I'm still waiting to send the wire. And I've already sent, I've already sent the majority of the money, but these numbers keep changing and it keeps getting less and less. So I'm like, the money that I sent wasn't enough to cover. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, finally. I'm just like, okay, here's what my worst case scenario is. I'm going to send this money. And this is like probably one thirty. Um, Anyways, uh, but let me finish the, the, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we get into Tom finally talks to the insurance compliance person. And he finally goes, well, you know what? We don't normally do this, but in these circumstances, when we're ready to close, we can make an exception. Dude, they could always make that exception. Like that was such a bull crap. And this is what happens. They they stick to the guns, stick to the guns until they need to make a change. And all of a sudden they call the audible and they're like, ah, well, I guess we can take Dam's best. I guess it will work. We'll only make it work for one year. We can and then you're gonna have to find new insurance. And guess what? Next year they'll make another exception because I'll make them, right? Or they can default on the loan. I mean, that's not what they're going to do, but like you just got to you gotta understand your cards and what you're stacked up against, right? Because I'm not going to have my insurance costs go up to 168. There's no way in hell. I'm not going to do it. It would kill the deal, by the way, right? So I wouldn't kill it, but it would just make it not as profitable. And I want to make a lot of profit. So they finally give me the exception. And so that's good. So like, ooh, Hold on. Now, and this is early in the morning. We're getting it all still worked out, but we still have a wire. And, and now they have to do all these recalculations. You have to get all the paperwork to match. So then, then we're at 125, but we throw the ringer and, hey, I think we can, we can, we're, your guys have insured it for too much money. He goes and gets another quote with the same uh, AM's best broker, and we get it for like 110. So he saves me another $15,000, which is still big money because that's, again, that allows us for more, more proceeds. So somewhere at about noon, I think, or 12, we finally, we rate lock, which was beautiful. We got it. We got it at a great rate. The market was down. Everything worked out. We got our loan proceeds. Like now we know exactly how much loan dollars we're getting. So now they're, they're working to, to get all this stuff done. And then here comes, where's your wire, Corey? Where's your wire? And I already sent the wire. And I know it's coming, but it doesn't show up, right? And so we're, we're down to, and by the way, if I don't close, the bank's already said, hey, if you don't close, we're, we'll are we extend another 24 hours, but it'll cost you $15,000 and um, it'll be a fee and you won't get it credited towards anything. So I'm like, I'm not going to spend another $15,000 on stupid crap. I'm like, it's got to close. I'm like, my, my money's, I'm like giving them the, the Fed reference number. And so 10 minutes, I'm, and I cannot make this up, 10 minutes before the end of the wire period for the title company to close, my wire gets received. He's like, receive the wire. <laughs> Permission to send out, to, to, to finalize and close and send out everybody's wires. And everybody says, yes, 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 yes. And just like that, 10 minutes before the end of the period where the title company cannot physically close and record, we get closed and we record. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it. I feel like this is the story on every deal that I've ever done. It always comes down to the wire most of the time. I don't know why. 
And that's when, at the end of the call, we always, I call it the three amigos. Me, Aaron Mole, my mortgage broker, and Wayne Siegel, my attorney. We get on a group call, and this is where, like, we did it again. We did it again. And we start, we have a little chuckle, we have a laugh, because I swear, it's always something. And I couldn't think of a better crew to do this with, man. It is so... And, and we talk to ourselves, we're like, I don't know how we do it, but every time, every time, we make it happen. And we've continued to make it happen. We will always make it happen. And it's the will of our hearts and our desires of our minds and all the things that it takes to be successful. And sometimes, you know, people actually are out there wondering what happened and some people make things happen. I'm gonna tell you, you gotta be that person. Are you ready to make things happen in your life? Are you ready to not, you know, settle for just being average? Do you want to make something out of your life? You know, what does that look like? You get to control it. You control your destiny. What are you telling yourself daily? How are you going to figure out when adversity comes? Are you going to sit and waller in it? Or are you going to rise above it and say, not today, not me. This is my time. This is my area. I'm going to make it. I'm going to plow away for it and everybody's going to see my trail because you know what? It's what I have to do. It's, I must do it. I cannot quit and I cannot fail. Guys, it takes that type of commitment and that belief to make it through. Guys, if you believe it, you can achieve it and your paradise is possible.